Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to talk about Euler's Theorem. So here is Euler's Theorem. Let G be a connected planar graph with the number of vertices being equal to V and the number of edges being equal to E. We introduce this new variable R, which is the number of regions determined by the planar embedding. Very important. Uh, we say that the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions is always equal to 2. So, as an example, let's take a look at this graph right here. This is K4, so we know K4 is going to be a planar connected graph. So, let's take a look at how many vertices it has. Well, we know it has four vertices, and the number of edges is going to be six, and here I have the number of regions equal to four. So, what is a region? A region is any area that is surrounded by edges. So this R2 is surrounded by three edges. R1 the same and R3 is the same idea. We're, we also have the infinite region which takes place outside the graph. So it is all the space outside of your graph. So we have four vertices, six edges, four regions. So the theorem says that the number of vertices which is four minus the edges 6 plus the regions 4 is equal to 2 and 4 minus 6 plus 4 is equal to 2 so it works. Now we should prove it but before we do that I do want to go over one thing very quickly and that is the fact that it has to be a planar embedding so let's take a look at K4 again except we're gonna draw it without a planar embedding. So what happens here? Vertices is still equal to 4, edges is still equal to 6, but now we have 2, 3, 4, 5 regions. So R is going to be equal to 5. So 4 minus 6 plus 5 is not going to be equal to 2. But this doesn't mean that we can conclude the graph is not planar. All it means is that we know this is not a planar embedding. So if the numbers don't come up as equal to 2, we cannot conclude that the graph is not planar. So why is this theorem important then? Because of a couple corollaries we'll see afterwards, but let's do the proof. So we're going to do an induction on edges. And there's one base case we have to look at, and that is when the number of edges is equal to zero. So how do we have a connected planar graph with zero edges? Well, we can have one vertex, and that's it. So V is equal to one, E is equal to zero. There is one region, which is the region outside of the graph. So just box it in for the sake of visual aid and this will be one region so we have v minus e plus r is one minus zero plus one which is equal to two so our base case is good now for induction we're going to let some graph with less than or equal to k edges be true so it's going to be a planar connected graph that follows the fact that v minus e plus r is equal to two and we're going to show that when we add an edge, it's still going to be true. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take G and we're going to remove an edge. So H is going to have an edge is less than or equal to K. So we define H as G minus some random edge. And when we remove an edge, there's two possibilities for the graph H and what edge is removed. So in one scenario, what we have here is, let's say we remove an edge and the graph is still connected. So what this means is that it probably looks like this, then there's some other stuff going on up top, but we're gonna remove this edge right here. So I'm gonna dash it in yellow, that's the edge we removed. And in this case, what happens is we had two regions here, R1 and R2, 
But then when we removed it, they just became one region. So this is now going to be R1. So we have that H and we're going to talk about some parameters of H. So the number of vertices in H is going to be the same thing as the number of vertices in G, so our original graph. But the number of edges in H is going to be equal to the number of edges in G minus 1 because we removed some edge in our original graph G. And the number of regions in G is going to be, I'm sorry, the number of regions in H is going to be the number of regions in G minus 1 because originally when we had this line in we had two regions and then when we removed it we only had one region so we went down one. So we know that for VG minus EG plus RG was equal to 2 so we want to show that VH minus EH plus RH is equal to 2. So when we do some substitutions we will see that VG minus, okay, EH is now EG minus 1 and then RH is going to be RG minus 1. It's just going to be equal to VG minus EG and then the negative 1 and the positive 1 are going to cancel out. So we know that VH minus EH plus RH is equal to VG minus EG plus RG, which is equal to 2. So if we remove a, an edge and the graph is still connected, then we're okay. For the second example here, we have a disconnected case. So that means that in our original graph, we had something that looks like this, and we had this one edge in the center, which I'll just do in yellow, and we're going to remove this yellow edge. So the original graph G, we remove it, and then it becomes H. So what do we have here? Well, now what we have is we have two subgraphs, H1 and H2. So when we had our full graph in, or our edge in, G was the graph you see now. We remove the edge. Then it becomes H, which has two parts, H1 and H2. So the number of vertices is still the same. So VG is going to be V of H1 plus V of H2. The number of edges in G, well, it's going to be the number of edges in H1 plus the number of edges in H2. And then we subtract one edge. Now the interesting thing happens with the number of regions. So what happens here is before we removed it, this one region actually encompassed the other side as well. Because say for instance this is our graph here, let's just fill in the rest. So we'll use this as an example graph. Then this region 1 encompasses the whole thing. So that's good. But when we remove this edge and we take a look at two different subgraphs, then we count an empty region in H2, or the infinite region in H2, and we count the infinite region in H1. So it's going to be equal to the number of regions in H1 plus the number of regions in H2, but we, because we counted the infinite region twice, we need to remove it once. So what we have here is our set of substitutions. So when we take a look at um, VG minus EG plus RG equal to 2, we can make some substitutions. And we want to show that, well, VH1 plus VH2 minus eh1 plus eh2 minus 1 plus rh1 plus rh2 minus 1 is equal to 2. So is this true? Well, 
This we're going to get VH1 plus VH2 minus EH1 minus EH2. Uh, we're going to get a plus 1 here. We're going to get plus RH1 plus RH2 minus 1. So this plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel. And that is going to be equal to 2. Because we know that it holds for smaller graphs based on our inductive hypothesis. So the new graph, or the old graph G, is also going to hold true. So we've just proven that this works in two circumstances. I highly suggest just remembering the pictures, and if you can derive it from there, you're probably a lot better off. So, what do we do with this? Well, with this we can derive some other interesting properties about loop-free planar graphs, and this will help you figure out if a graph is planar or not. So this does not have to be a planar embedding. So what we say here is if G is a loop-free planar graph with the number of vertices equal to V, the number of edges greater than 2, and our regions, then 3 times the number of regions is going to be less than or equal to 2 times the number of edges, and the number of edges is going to be less than or equal to 3 times the number of vertices minus 6. So how do we get that? Well, we take a look at the smallest region, so R1. This is the smallest possible region we can get in a loop-free planar graph. Because if we have two vertices, then this region isn't really enclosed by anything. That's the infinite region. So we want the smallest region that is not infinite. So this is our R1. And we see that we have a flag system here. So this just counts the degree. So when we take a look at our region, it's surrounded by three flags. So if we sum up all of our regions, then it should be equal to less than or equal to the total number of degrees. So here's two things we know. We know that the sum of all the degrees in the graph is going to be equal to two times the number of edges. And if we take the number of regions R and we sum those up. So we take R and we say, okay, well, in each region, we have three flags in it. Then that should be equal to or less than the number of edges. So what we have here is 3R is less than or equal to 2E. And what do we know from that? Well, we just proved Euler's theorem, so we know that V minus E plus R is equal to 2. So we want to make a substitution here. So what we'll do is we'll multiply everything by 3. So 3V minus 3E plus 3R is equal to 6. Now we know that 3R is less than or equal to 2E, so we're going to substitute this 3R with 2E. So we get 3V minus 3E plus 2R is equal to 6. Actually, this isn't equal to. This should now be greater than or equal to because we made a substitution that was bigger. So now our sum here should be a little bit bigger. Pen is not cooperating as well right now. So let's just simplify and solve. So 3v minus e is greater than or equal to 6. So negative e is going to be greater than or equal to 6 minus 3v. So we'll multiply by negative 1, and we'll get e is going to be less than or equal to 3v minus 6. So here is a result from Euler's theorem. Now what do we do with this result? Well, we prove that k5 is nonplanar. So e is going to be less than or equal to 3v minus 6 for any planar graph. So let's draw k5 here. We're going to prove that k5 is not planar with this theorem. So how many vertices do we have? We have five vertices. How many edges do we have? Well, we have 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten has to be less than or equal to three times five minus six. So ten has to be less than or equal to nine. And we know this clearly isn't true, therefore k5 is non-planar. Okay, so there is also a version for our bipartite graphs, because if you remember, we also have k33 is non-planar, so we should probably be able to pr prove that. So from Euler's theorem, we will get that 4 times the number of regions is less than or equal to 2 times the number of edges, and e is less than or equal to 2v minus 4. So why this inequality? Well, because if you remember in bipartite graphs, uh, this can't happen here. You cannot have... Well, you have to separate them, right? So A cannot be connected to any other A, and B cannot be connected to any other B, but it's bipartite, so there's only two different partitions, so this has to be either A or B, but they're both connected to it, so it can't. So that means that, you know, we have three flags here, but we can't do that, so the next possible thing we could do is four flags. So four times the number of regions is less than or equal to two times the number of edges. So with that, we can simplify, say 2r is less than or equal to e, so again, we have v minus e plus r is equal to 2. We can multiply that by 2 to make a substitution. So 2v minus 2e plus 2r is equal to 4. Let's make that substitution. So 2v minus 2e plus e is greater or equal to 4 for the same reasons as before. So 2v minus e is greater or equal to 4. And we can just solve here and say, okay, well, 2v minus 4 is going to be less, or sorry, greater than or equal to e. So we have proven this statement now. So now we can show that k33 is non-planar. So again, e has to be less than or equal to 2v minus 4. So let's draw k33. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Number of vertices, 6. Number of edges, well, each one on the left goes to 3 on the right. So it's 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 9. So we know that 9 has to be less than or equal to 2 times 6 minus 4. So 9 has to be less than or equal to 8, which we know is not true. Therefore, k33 is non-planar. So that was Euler's theorem. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, you can check out trevtutor.com for some more cool videos, and you can also check out the Reddit community at reddit.com slash r slash trevtutor, and you can ask some questions there as well. So have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time for some Hamilton Cycles.